We got Gilbert Burns back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Olivier Open Mercier at UFC 231 on December 8th in Toronto. Gilbert, how are you, man? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Feeling good. That, how's uh, how's your Saturday going? Uh, is this like a rest day, or do you get in some training as well? That was one of the hardest day I have. Uh, I do my condition at IAGP at the Boca Raton, and then today was the circuit day. So we uh, the condition that I do is kind of like more functional training. And today we had like three hard rounds. Like that was that was a hard day. Now I'm enjoying. It. I came here to Miami. A friend of mine is here, uh, Rodrigo Cavaca. He's a black belt from Zenith from Brazil. He's teaching a seminar at Cyborg. So I just, I came after the seminar just to hang out here. But that was a hard day. Okay. Well, I appreciate you taking the time after a hard day like that. Um, first off, just on the matchup, uh, are, are you happy to see this fight get rebooked? Because you guys were supposed to fight earlier this year. Yes, I do. I do. I think he's a, he's a very good matchup. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's a, a little bit underrated. I think he's, he's very good everywhere. Like he good stand up, good, good grappling, good takedowns. He's very strong for the, for the division too. I'm, I'm happy that we can make that again. And that just, just happened. You know, like I think every, everything happened for a reason. And we sports right here. I got, okay. I got there heavy. I was doing my water load. Don't matter. Right now, it doesn't matter anymore, but so a lot of guys coming crazy heavy. I heard about the way that the, the, the you know, Romero gone in Australia when he fought Luke Rockhold. I heard that he got there like two, 217, something like that, a couple of times. So I never missed away, but I, I let it go over. That's it. I'm happy that we're doing the fight again. I'm glad to go. Now he's on, on he, in his hometown now, not hometown, he's from Quebec, but it's going to be in Canada. But I'm very excited for that. Let's talk about your last fight quickly. I know things didn't go your way in that one against Dan Hooker, but uh, you always learn more from a loss than a win. Uh, what do you take away from that fight? Was it just a simple fact you got caught? How do, how do you look at your performance in that fight? I, I don't think he just, I don't, I don't believe in that. You say, oh, I, I just get caught. No, I, you may, something happened to you, get caught. And I was very confident for that fight. And uh, I had my strategy to take him down. He's for sure. He's of course, he's, is like his background is all on the, on the kickboxing, but as the right before I get caught, when I connect my overhand right, and I I I, I realize identify that he fell the punch a little bit, and I just throw a quick one. I want to throw it again, but heavy harder. So, but when I did that, I exposed so much myself because I loaded too much because I want to throw like on my mind was I throw a quick one. Like, let's see if he's there, boom. And then I touch it, and then he fell a little bit. I say, okay, if I throw the real one, that's it, you know. And then I kind of, I load the punch a little bit. I open up too much. And if you, I watched the tape, like, over the 100 times. And he just did a, a quick right hand. To be honest, he didn't push a lot. He didn't put a lot of power, but I did. I throw all my weight. I throw, it's kind of like we played that in Brazil a little bit. I I punched his head with my face, to be honest. And I felt that a little bit, supposed to be a little bit on the floor recover, but that I just want to go back and fight and kind of like get a little bit on my ego. But we work a lot on that. We work and get calm, get something happen. Just, you know, take my time a little bit. And I learned so much, like so much about me, about my emotions going to the fight, a little bit about my ego, you know, like stay with the strategy, listen to the corner. A lot of things. So that was a good learning. I learned it like so, so much. One of the good things about you is you have a great support system around you as far as your teammates, your management and everything like that. Uh, I know Ali, we talk about this a lot. He goes beyond the, the duties of a manager. Did he have any advice for you after that fight that maybe, uh, you know, helped you, uh, you know, dealing with that loss? For sure. He talked like, hey, take your time. We, we, bro, we talk so much after that fight. We kind of made a plan to fight again in December. We made a strategy. I had the strategy. I told him about the strategy. And another thing that he said, it's danger. Eh? Like, now you feel that I told you about the knockouts. You're a jiu-jitsu guy. You have all your background in grappling. And then get a knockout. That's a little danger. You got to be smart to deal with. But we talk a lot. So thank God I have Ali as my manager. Not just Ali, but I have a lot of good people surround me, like my wife, my kids, 
my conditioning coach, like that guy that I just trained with at IHP, man, doing an amazing job, my physical therapist, my mental coach from Brazil, Vicente Luke, Daniel, like Henry Hoof, all the guys from Hard Knocks, Greg, Kami. So I have, I have, thank God I have like great teams around me, like a lot of good people that I can talk with, that I can be, not just about, I, I got caught. No, like we can go deeper than that and really like learn a lot from the mistake. And how are you structuring your camp uh, for, for this fight? Is it just, uh, you know, the same thing as usual, just training at hard knocks? And I know you split, uh, you know, some time as well uh, between some other gyms as well, too. <sighs> to be honest, it didn't change nothing. For sure, I, I learned a lot. I, I did a couple changes, but it was about more mentally, more, you know, kind of more strategy going to the fight. The one thing that I'm doing a lot more now, I'm doing a lot, a lot, a lot of grappling with Wagner Rocha. That's one of, like, we got great connection, especially on the up and downs. Like, when I win, he was there. When I lost, he was there. So we're getting more, more deeper relationship with the coach. But besides that, still doing my conditioning at IHP, still training with Harry Hoof, all, the, all my training partners at Hard Knocks. And uh, I think that's it. I still, we're still doing the same. But we we try to be every time smarter, you know. Who who are some of your main training partners at Hard Knocks? I know there's a lot of different bodies, but who are some of the guys you work with a little bit more than others? Yeah, I like I like to to work a lot with Logan Logan Storley. Logan Storley, man, that guy's good. I, I love watching him in Bellator. He's a beast. The guy is he's a beast. Uh, Adam Borix, choose from 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 Bellator. Uh, I work with McQuays McQuays. The Max Jackson, he's one of like my favorite partners. Sean Soriano, uh, Uzma, Rockhold when he's in town, Michael Chandler, Michael Johnson. Bro, a lot of guys. And, I, and the thing going to that to that fight, what makes me more, uh, I think, more aware of the situation because I do a lot of daily notes. I have all my notes from that camp. I did the whole camp to fight to fight him here in Florida. The fight was, uh, I think the fight was canceled on a Tuesday night. So during the camp, I have all my notes, all my filming, my sparrings, everything. So I just kind of like make a little clear, you know, make the change as I had fought, but I didn't fall, but I'm making all the change possible. And then I'm being smarter, like each camp and being, being getting better, improving. And, uh, especially having all that, the commentary, I, I do, I have all, bro, all, all videos, all sparrings. I have, have all the notes, how I felt that day, how was the training. So I think that that having that is it, an extra thing that helped me a lot too in my preparation. That's great. Yeah, you've documented everything. So you have that as a, you know, you can refer to it. And uh, it's kind of like you're getting two training camps in some ways, right? I mean, the kind of like I have, to be honest, this year I had that's going to be my fourth training training camp. So, but that fight was canceled. So I had that I'm going to my third fight in the year. But to be honest, that's my fourth training camp, and I, and I don't stop. I'm doing a lot of grappling in between. So I'm I'm always training. I always trying to to make my training partner better. You know, they have a fight, so we always push them, and then I push myself when I have the grappling. So trying to improve every time we can. So this fight's on the 8th. Uh, it's the beginning of November right now. Does the weight cut process start now, or does that happen a little bit later, uh, closer to the fight? Yeah, to be honest, before I was kind of more relaxed with the weight, and my, my regular weight's around 185, 180. If I relax a little bit, 190. So, but I was kind of, I was letting go a little bit. By the last three weeks, I was more conscious, like thinking more about the weight cut. But as that first time happened here in Florida, I, I don't relax no more. I don't get above 85. I get 80 most. I'm 180 right now, and I, I'm already cutting. So we in front, literally in front of a steakhouse. But I, I had my 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 lunch already. But they they own the steakhouse. I just came here, hang out with the guys, and not eating. I'm more more focused on my diet right now for sure. Uh, who's gonna be in your corner for this fight? Uh, Henry Hoof, Vicente Loki, supposed to be Wagner Rocha, but I think almost sure he just got a grappling match a day before, day after the other parties. Uh, but I'm working with Kemi a lot, Kemi Barzini, so it might be Kenny or 
Greg Jones. We, we want to work with the coach. We're going to see who's coming. But 100%, Luke Vicente, if he doesn't get a fight, in between that, it's going to be Luke Vicente and Harry Hoff. Excellent. That's a good corner. Um, how do you see this fight playing out on the eighth? Are you gonna be, do you feel like you're going to finish Olivier in this fight? Uh, he's very durable. He's very... I, I don't think he, he ever got finished, but I'm working there. I'm, like I always say, it's being a, like... I always say the same thing, but I'm, I like to watch the fights. I'm a big fan of the sports, always watching, always. And all the flows, flow grappling, flow. I, I, I like to be, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, I don't want to, I just, you know, I always be a current, like a fighter and expectator too. I like the sports. So I'm always watching, always supporting. And I like, I don't like the boring fights. I don't, I, I'm not a fan. Oh, that guy is a champion, but. He never finishes, so I'm not a big fan. But if the guy is looking for a finish, okay, they get my attention. I like the guy. I want him, him to win. So the same way I fight. I don't want to be like, I don't care if he never been finished. I'm going to look for the finish. I'm going to put pressure on him. I'm looking for a full finish. I want to be the first guy who finished Olivier Albert Mercy on December 8th. Last question before we let you go. We had some big news uh, this past week that uh, Demetrius Johnson uh, got traded to one championship uh, for Ben Askren. Uh, what, were you, what was your reaction when you heard that, that we don't ever see that in mixed martial arts? I, was, I think for the sport it was good, but it was a little sad too because bro, Demetrius the, was the goal. I think best pound for pounder, but it's kind of like sad see how things are going. I think I think money wise is gonna be better, but I think as a legacy like kinda of a little sad the way it goes. Like the guy going for sure one one championship is, is growing right now. But the guy is, is the best part for power from the best event ever. Now he's going to another side like sounds a little weird. I think money wise is gonna make sense for him but uh, I see him I, I try to see the both ways too it's like Money wise, gonna be better for him, but I don't know. I don't feel a little weird with that. And Ben Ashford was, he was retired. Now he come back, so so much crap. I think it's good that talk is good for the sport, it's good for the tension. But I don't, I don't think I don't I don't like the value they give to to Demetrius on that train. You know, like guy was retired, never supposed to be fighting more, and then they trade him. Like I don't I don't. I can see the both the, the both the both sides, but on my, on my side is looks a little sad. I don't like that too much. Um, if if you could trade someone to the UFC, who would you like to see in the UFC that's not there right now? Patricio Pitbull. Yeah, I just spoke to him this week. He's he's a talent, yeah. man. He's very good. Like he, that guy on the one forty five, we will make so much noise, so much noise. I would like to see Patricio fighting Max Holloway, Brian Ortega, Michael Johnson. Man, that would, that would be like a good wars. Patricia Pitbull, I think that's the guy to be traded. For sure, we have more guys like Fedor would be a nice one. Um, but Patricia Pitbull, I think, Dudu Dantes, Dudu Dantes, shoe, Eduardo Dantes from Bellator at, at 135 would be a nice one at UFC. But yeah, a couple couple trades, I think, yeah, my favorite would be Patricia Pitbull, Eduardo Dantes, and Fedor. I like that. Those are great choices. And this is going to be a great fight. I can't wait for this one. UFC 231, December 8th. Gilbert, always appreciate the time, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any thank yous or sponsors, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. My pleasure, James. Always an honor to talk with you guys. And I just just huge huge shout out to all, all my teammates, IHP, my conditioning training center, uh, Hard Knocks, Henry Hoof, Greg Jones, Kami. Wagner Rocha, Cyborg, everyone who helped me out put a lot of time on me. My Vicente Loki, all all his team from Brazil say hi to MMA. Uh, the guys doing a great, great job over there. Always gonna have a time to go there to Brazil to train with them. And well, my sponsor too, Tata Me Fightwear. If you're looking for a gi, that's the gi, nice gi. And uh, well, Fierce Fresh Meal, my sponsor here from my from Miami, my my meal plan, my nutritionist guy too. Marcelo Ferro, my physical therapist, uh, Tom Freitas, and you know, every, every single one who support me, my, my manager, thank you so much. And UFC 231, pay-per-view, don't miss that. Toronto, I'm coming.